Hey guys, so yeah, this is episode 50 of the Rupri Recap. You have myself, Rupri Itch, as well as the Kiwi Lads. First of all, man, how are you doing? We reached 50 episodes. That's uh, something to be pretty proud of. But uh, yeah, just what's your thoughts on that? And just how are you going overall? I'm going very well, Tim. 50 is a large number. I thought this was going to be done and dusted in 10, but we've managed to five times that, which I think is very impressive. We've had Super Rugby. We've had a Rugby World Cup yeah. under the belt as well. And now we're into the round of Super Rugby where we get six games back a week rather than the four. So more Correct. rugby, ideal, but also you know hard to pick the favourites in these competitions at the moment. Definitely with Super Rugby, so many underdogs still in the running for the title. Yeah, no, I agree, I agree. But of course, before we get into this, make sure obviously guys to drop a like, uh, drop a like, I mean, definitely uh, subscribe to our channel and um, yeah, just uh, check out our respective channels if you haven't already. But um, yeah, in, in terms of the uh, the first game of this round, we do have the likes of the Crusaders versus the Rebels. It'll be a good game, um, again, because it's one of those where it's very unpredictable, I'd say. like Again, any game the Crusaders play this at this rate is very unpredictable. But uh, the Rebels actually have been in good form recently. You know, they've, what, they're sitting, what, in fourth um, in the table, which is definitely where you and me would not think they'd be in this point of, uh, this point of time. So it's obviously uh, been a great, uh, great season for them so far. Yeah, so really with the Rebels, you know, they've been excellent so far throughout the season. And I think, to my knowledge, they haven't beaten any New Zealand team sit, like, I can't even remember the last time they, they won New Zealand. So it's one of those where it's going to be um, – if they do it, it'll be a, a big accomplishment. But at the same time, the Crusaders have been pretty uh, <laughs> um, off, you could say, throughout this, uh, throughout this season. So it wouldn't be as surprising as you'd like to think. But, um, yeah, what, what's your thoughts on this game overall? Well, let's just put it this way. All of the sides have got a great chance of breaking the losing streaks that they've had. Up against the Crusaders. We saw the Western Force beat the Saders last week for the first time in about a decade. We saw the worst ever start to a Super Rugby season for a defending champion as well as for the Crusaders in general. And they actually doubled that. I believe they hadn't lost three games in a row, let alone losing six. They've had a terrible start, but with how close this competition is and with the fact that the top eight sides go through rather than the top six or top four, they are still in the running for a Super Rugby Pacific quarterfinal, yeah. which is insane to think. But that's the way that Super Rugby's layout is. And, I mean, I saw something interesting. It was Tom Christie. A lot of people were being pretty harsh to him. Because in the post-match interview up against the Western Force, he still said that he feels like his Crusaders side, on their best day, can beat any side in Super Rugby Pacific. And everyone was like, nah, you're delusional, mate, you know. Your team sucks. But the thing is, they haven't been playing their best rugby. And they yeah. have been a long way from it in a lot of regards. But then look at what they did in that game up against the Chiefs. And that was probably one of their better days. So I do have a little bit of a tendency to still mm -hmm. say, even though people hated it, we talked about it on one of my recent streams, a lot of people don't want to see the Crusaders in the top eight. That's more the reasoning behind it rather than them saying... Like yeah. They say Crusaders won't make the top eight. Really, they don't want them to. But I still think the Crusaders are a decent enough side that if they can finally find something that works, maybe, just maybe, they can still make it. But they're up against a Rebel side who have been in some great form. Derby Lancaster getting himself three tries in a recent performance. Filippo Dalgunu, Andrew Callaway, some of these guys in the back line have been tearing it up this season. It's just whether or not they can do it in Christchurch. That's the big task, but records are made to be broken. And like I said, it's your best chance ever to do it up against the Crusaders. So the Rebels have to make sure they don't blow this opportunity. Yeah, no, couldn't agree more. And and the list of players you mentioned there, you know, they're potential Wallabies, uh, this at least. And this could be a good experience for them, you know, going into the Rugby Championship later later in the, uh, the year. Because again, you know, they haven't been able to win in New Zealand for for a long time. So it just gives them more experience in kind of doing that. So yeah, I, I like to think that the rebels definitely have a shot in winning this game. Um, it's one of those where, like you said, they have a really good side actually, when you look at it overall, like I, I'm actually in the, the works of doing a video around the, the wallabies in terms of who I think could make the squad. And it's, it's, it, there's a lot of Rebels players who actually stand out in that in that case. And there's a lot of um, new names to say um, from a lot of teams, but particularly from the Rebels. So, um, yeah, they definitely have a good squad and they definitely have the capability to beat this Crusaders side. Because, you know, when I look at that lineup as well from the Crusaders, like, they've made some bold changes there. You know, they've they've taken out Fanaki, Che Fanaki, out of that center spot. You know, he's um, gone towards the bench. I see they've um, 
brought back Colin Grace um, into the side, um, as well as uh, Christian Lionel Willie. Um, I think he's off. I think he's off the bench, if I'm not mistaken, for this one. Um, but again, it's one of those where, yeah, they, they have a good side. Like I said, you, you can't deny they have a good side. I thought the one positive thing I thought from that Western Force game, at least, was Levi Moore. I think he, for the first time ever, had a, a positive performance you can kind of talk about from a Crusaders point of view because he just hasn't been able to kind of um, just make it work is what we saw, obviously, previous season against Modern Pacifica. But, um, yeah, I'm hoping, you know, hopefully you can kind of, Made this a consistent thing now. You can kind of go off this performance and kind of um, move into this one against the Rebels. But um, yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see. Mm. But uh, in terms of this game, who do you think will win between these two sides? I also found it quite funny on the commentary for that last game for the Crusaders because they mentioned about how Dallas McLeod and Levi Moore, that is the midfield combo. And they talked about how well Dallas McLeod had fed the ball to Levi Moore, now that was a perfect combo. And then the first game that Dallas McLeod isn't at 12 yeah. alongside Levi exactly. Moore, he actually scores a try. So you wonder whether or not maybe, you know, as, as nice as it is to think that that's the dream team, maybe there's something there that needs to be adjusted hmm. and could help them in the future. They've also got Johnny McNichol at 15 for this game. Which I'm very curious to see how yeah. it goes. He is such a good player and bad player at the same time, I think a lot of people would say, because... <laughs> He has a match winning game and then he has a match losing performance. Exactly. And I was going to say, I, I, what one's yeah, going to be this? A, a good player. I'd be like, ooh, I've seen oh, a few moments you already. But... You've got to give him some credit for what he's done for the Crusaders no, as well what, throughout the season. Well, he definitely has a, you know, a few, he has a mistake in him. That's all I've seen mm. so far. But again, we, we, we can't kind of go into that because again, yeah, let's set aside. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of things you can talk about in terms of why it's, I guess, gone wrong so far. But um, I guess overall, just in terms of this game, who do you think will then uh, win this one? I'm going to go... Well, it, it it shouldn't be classed as bold, but this season it is. And I'm going to say the Crusaders are going to get themselves the win. <laughs> They've got Scott Barrett yeah. back at four. They've got Fletcher Noe at three. Yeah. Drummond at nine, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to tell with Drummond. He's a bit 50-50. But I'm still going to say they have just enough. They've got Havili off the bench as well. Crusaders by a little bit of a narrower margin than people expect. But then Super Rugby Pacific this year, they're going to win by 25. Who knows? Like that's, yeah. the, that's the thing with this year's competition. You just don't know. There's about four sides that are so unpredictable, and the Crusaders are one of them. They really are. They really are. And it, it may come as a shock because, again, I've actually backed the Crusaders a lot of the times, actually, in these games. But when we do our predictions, because, you know, mm. we just kind of think, you know, they got to at least win this one or <laughs> this one. Like you're, you're getting sick of getting it wrong, though. Aren't exactly. You? So, you're, so you're I'm kind of at the point like, where, like, I actually, like, I'm actually going to go against them in this one. I'm actually going to say the Rebels will win. I'm going to go with the Rebels. But at the same time, I also want the Crusaders to do something here, like, just show a bit of. <laughs> I don't know. So just a better performance to what we've seen in the previous ones. Uh, that's all I'm asking. But um, again, I, I still will about the Rebels because, you know, again, I think they've been impressive so far this season. And if there's any Australian side, I think so far that's impressed me the most, I, it, it is the Rebels. I think they've been the most impressive Australian side um, throughout the season. So I think they definitely have the capability in yeah, getting a job done in Christchurch. So yeah, now moving on then towards the second game of the round. Of course, we have the likes of the War Tars versus the Chiefs. Again, this will be a nail biter one because both sides have been very inconsistent throughout this season. But I like to think that um, you know, they've both had some decent performances in terms of like one-off games, you know, for the War Tars, of course, they've been in the Crusaders twice this season, which is something to be kind of pretty proud of because, you know, that doesn't uh, normally happen. Uh, it's what you'd expect. But again, for the Chiefs, they've had some pretty good displays as well. You know, they beat the Brumbies by very convincing, uh, very convincingly, actually. And they've had also a good win over the um, the Crusaders as well at the opening uh, opening season, opening day of the season. So there's there's some positives, I think, throughout what we've seen. But I think going into this, I, I think it's really, a, it's going to be a 50-50 game. I don't think this will be a one-sided one, but... I could be completely wrong here. I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but what, what's your thoughts on this one? Well, the Waratahs coming off a win, of course, up against the Crusaders. That was a very high-scoring game, and I feel yeah. like that is something that makes it very hard to judge what we're going to see here. The Hurricanes, they were able to beat the Chiefs, so they both played two weeks ago. They had the yep. bye, so now get them back in. Some sides do all right after a bye. Some sides don't do so well. Ask the Brumbies. But 
I think that this game, on paper, it could be close. But then in reality, if one side's firing just that little bit better, which I think if either of these sides were to fire well, it would be the Chiefs. I think that the Waratahs have made a few changes compared to what they had in that game up against the Crusaders. Some for the better, some maybe will hurt them a bit. But I would still say that I think the Chiefs are going to get themselves the win here. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I I think I'm also with you in that in that point where I think the Chiefs will get the win. I just think it'll be a closer game than what most people would predict. That's all. But um, again, you never know because, I mean, there's the Chiefs do have a, a really good back line with the likes of Mamoni Narwa, McKenzie, Cortis Latima. I mean, Antonio Brown obviously coming back in with Bohi B, if I'm not mistaken, and Stevens. They, yeah, they have a really good, good team. It's just the War Tars, you know, they, they can definitely just, you know, they, they can, they can, they can surprise you. Um, and we've seen that so far this season. So we'll see what happens in that one. But um, again, Midland towards the third game of the round, Fiji Jura against the likes of Mod Pacifica. This will be um, a clash for sure, and definitely a high scoring one to what we've seen in the previous games because th- it never lets us down in that point of view. Um, we've always, it's always a action packed game in terms of tries, and that's kind of what we want to see overall in Super B. And these two sides definitely give you that when they go against each other. But uh, yeah, I guess from from my perspective, I think this is me um, a great game to watch because I think both sides have really good talent that I've actually um, have kind of displayed i guess throughout the season i mean like f- from a modern pacifica standpoint you have like the likes of anisi the number eight position i know he's come off the bench for this one but still he's been pretty good throughout this season i mean julian Sevilla, his transition into the uh, modern pacifica side has been excellent in my in my opinion i think he's been up there with you know we we got we went we went over this in, in my in my channel around like kind of the best centers in super p and he's definitely in the conversation for sure so i think he's definitely a, um, had a good season you have the likes of what uh, William Havili, I've been pretty impressed by from a modern Pacific standpoint. But again, you have the likes of when you look at the likes of Fiji Jura, I mean, there's a ton of players you can mention. I mean, the, the obvious one is Massey because he's just been excellent for for the Fiji Jura. But you have the likes of Ikinaviri, you've got, um, gosh, um, Roto Sila, I've been pretty impressed by at the lock spots. So you have, I mean, who else? You got, uh, I mean, Josh C, I wouldn't say him because he only came back until like what the third or fourth round, if I'm not mistaken. He didn't kind of start immediately, but um, I guess Ratu Manda has been pretty good. But um, yeah, I mean, they have, they, both sides have some really good players. So it's definitely a, a standout match between both. But uh, what's, what's your take on this one overall? Well, like you said, it should be high scoring. Hopefully the weather is going to behave for the contest because if it yeah. does... I think it's going to be a try scoring fest. Now, the last time that these two sides played, it was Moana Pacifica who managed to get themselves a win, and that was regarded as a bit of an upset. Now, Fiji and Draw, they have still struggled with their away games, but something that has stayed consistent is their ability to win home matches, although their most recent home exactly. matches, so. they struggled. So I'm still saying the Fiji and Draw for this contest. I just feel like in terms of what we've seen when they have their home field advantage, they just seem to be on that next level and that's exactly what they need. They just need to start finding away wins. And if they can do that, you know, we're looking through at their next games. They've got the Brumbies at GIO. That's going to be a very tough game. They've got the Force away from home. They've got the Reds. They've got the Highlanders. And then they've got the Rebels. So they have actually played a majority of the New Zealand sides already. Yeah. So the benefit that they've got is, with the exception of the Highlanders... They have got an all-Australian finish to this competition. Now, that can be a benefit, but only if they make the most of it and get maybe one or two away wins along the way so that they can then confirm their spot. In the quarterfinals, I'm backing them, though, in this game up against Moana Pacifica. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree with you from a fixture standpoint. It's one of the most favourable ones, actually, when you look at all all the teams in the comp. uh, They definitely have, I'd probably say, I'm not going to say like the the easiest because you can't really say that because this, this season's been so un- unpredictable in terms of which teams have stood out. But definitely, when you look at it on paper, you can definitely say that they have a, um, you know, they have a, I guess, a friendlier uh, fixture around the other sides have. But um, again, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a close game to what you what you said. I mean, both sides have been impressive, but um, and like you said, one of one did beat them in the reverse fixture, of course. But um, that was part of the uh, Melbourne round, if I'm not mistaken. So. It wasn't. It didn't really feel like a home game for the Modern mm. Pacifica, um, for them. But uh, I think this time around, I think Fiji Jura will get the revenge. So I am also going to back them as well in this game. But um, again, moving on towards the fourth game of the round, which is Brumbies versus the Hurricanes. This is me a uh, 
well, I, I would want to say this would be a nail biter of a contest, mm, but it I don't know. Be, but... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we we said this about the Blues Brumries uh, for the previous week, and it just mm. didn't turn out that way. So, I I don't know what to think about this game because I honestly think the the Hurricanes could just run away with this. I think that this, for what I <laughs> for what I saw in the previous game against the Brumbies, um, yeah, I, I I don't know. But again, like when you look at the Brumbies lineup, at least like they brought some, they brought back some good talent there with the likes of Alan Aotoa, Lenny Town now back in the side. They have a bit more kind of um, chemistry to say at least, kind of the players you expect to be back in back in there. So I I'd like to think they'll do pretty well in this one. Um, again, I've seen um. You have to remind me his name, but I know that they have a new seven as well for the Brumbies. Um, uh, Rory Scott, is it? That's it, Rory Scott. Yeah. So, like, we'll see how he goes because he's he's a he's a young up and coming player. So we'll see if he makes kind of a, and if he if he impresses me or not. But um, but again, I just think the Brumbies have a good side. But but then the Hurricanes, it's just yeah, it's the, it's the Hurricanes. What, what I mean, what can you do? I mean, they were they were uh, great i mean they they really just controlled that game uh, perfectly against the fijian drawer i mean particularly i mean when they're playing when you're playing away as well it's just even more more impressive of a performance so um yeah it's going to be tough to stop them but uh, what, i mean it, instead of asking you if the like who's going to win this how do you think the brumbies can win this game because i think that's probably the better way in, fra- in, in in framing it how do you think the brumbies can win this game against the hurricanes well, putting together five phases or more will be a fantastic start because that yeah. is something up against the Blues that maybe we saw once throughout the 80 minutes. Their handling was shocking. Their penalty count against them was shocking. There was no chemistry. There was no discipline. There was hardly any physicality in the breakdown. But aside from that, at least they showed up to Eden Park. So, <laughs> you know... They've got one of those things at the moment locked in, and that is that they're going to show up to the game. They're at home. They have to put in a much better performance, and they have to be physical with this Hurricane side. We've seen it. Brad Shields, Duplessis, Karifi, Braden Yossi. They're going to be getting into pretty much every breakdown they can. Same with it having a Zaya walker Leawiri there in the locking duo. Like You have to try and match power and power in this game, or else you are going to find yourself infringing get in behind on the scoreboard and then if you allow that for the Hurricanes, similar to the Fiji and Drua game, even when there's little bits of fight back, you can't get back into the contest. So for me, they definitely have to muscle up. And then alongside that, I think they're just picking the right player in their back line rather than just going for every little thing that they think, right, that last thing didn't work, we'll try something completely different. They need some sort of structure and... You know, it's, it's going to be a good game. The benefit that they've got is it is at home. And, yeah. you know, it would be a massive call to say that the Brumbies are going to win this game up against the Hurricanes. But, you know, who knows? I'm going the Canes, though. Like, before you think I'm, yeah. I'm picking yeah. the Brumbies, yeah, I'm going to go the Canes. Right. But they aren't huge favourites for this contest. In fact, I think that this is the closest game in terms of the betting odds. In fact, it is for the whole really? round. So, yep. The Brumbies are only three dollar hundred dollars compared to the Hurricanes one dollar forty two. Wow, I'm actually surprised by that. Like, really? That's the that's the close. I would be too. Much. Yeah, yeah. I okay. don't know how that works. I guess putting forty points or having forty points put on you, and then beating a winning streak of Fiji when they're at home doesn't matter. Yeah, and then saying I, that I, it's, it's I super rugby, so yeah. who knows? Like, yeah. Cob probably yeah, just know. don't want to give away too much money because they have. For so many other rounds when underdogs have been winning. Exactly. Exactly. But um look, I mean, it's it's one of those where I think the hurricanes are definitely I mean, you already pointed it out um clearly, they're definitely the better side going into this. Um there's no doubt about that. But you also don't know in terms of like the, the history books, if it if it counts for anything in this one, the Brumbies are pretty have been pretty good at, at home against the Hurricanes. Mm. When I look back in previous games, like I can remember like two quarterfinals that they both faced off faced off each other and Brumbies won both times at home. Mm. So it shows Crusaders you the thing- also had a pretty good winning streak up against the Western force. Yeah, but the Saders are just, uh, they're anomaly this season. They're, they're, they're just, they're having that one. They're just having that season, which we see from big clubs once in a while. Just, just, it's a, it's a one-off really for them. I think, I mean, I can get a lot more into them if you want me to, we could do a whole episode around them if we had to just around the Crusaders and, I guess what we expect from them further, but um, but no, I think for this, um, this may shock a lot of people, but I will actually back the underdog in this. I'm going to be backing 
the hurt no the the brumbies i got about the the brumbies of this mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm gonna back the the underdog um this base i mean it's i mean it's probably not gonna turn out uh right as they maybe score 50 points in them but hey you you, you never know maybe the brumbies shock all of us and i'll be happily surprised but also pleased that i made this prediction mm. looking like i knew my stuff but actually i'm just well, hoping that the, sounds the like brumbies... you think that they shouldn't be as much of an underdog as they are no 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 the, the brumbies are going to do the blues a service that's what i'm that's kind of where i'm going uh, so is the brumbies are going to do from. us a service and they're going to win this game so then mm. when it comes down towards that blues hurricanes game we can take over them and jump into that first spot so Brumbies are going to win. Uh, it's it just, it's ready in my head there. It's just really locked in from the mm -hmm. key ready. So um, it's going to happen. But uh, again, um, <laughs> again, moving on towards the uh, the uh, the fifth game of the round, uh, we do the likes of the Hollanders versus the Force. And to me, this is the game where if I had to put in terms of the betting odds, I'd honestly say this is like going to be, I would expect it to be the closest because both these sides, like, I mean, the Western Force coming off a, a great win over the, uh, the Crusaders. And the Hondas are just a. Um, yeah, I think they are probably the most unpredictable team. I think this year. Like, I, mm -hmm. I think it's one of those where like you expect them to do so well, but they let you down so often. <laughs> it's like it's it's one of those like where I I don't know what to think because it's like you, you would want them to do. You would think they could win this at home, but at the same time they've proven you know um, in previous games where they they haven't been able to live up to those expectations. You know, if I look back to the start of the season against Modern Pacifica, you know, they almost let that game, like, slip in a way. Luckily, they obviously came back and uh, came back into that game and won it. And again, they, they let, obviously, the Brumbies win that um, as well a few weeks um, a few weeks ago, is what I remember. So, yeah, they definitely have, uh, their home form isn't to what we've kind of known as um, or seen as um, in previous seasons. But um, just from your perspective, like, w what's your take on this game? Because again, both these sides, of course, are sitting in the um, kind of the bottom end of the table. So, I mean, both sides are obviously going to wanting to win here to kind of I guess improve their chances and get and get into the playoffs. So what's your what's your take then? Well they only need one win to get right up there as well. That yeah. is the exciting part yeah, of exactly. this competition. Also the downfall of course of the fact that it's the top eight sides. I know that that's been talked about quite yeah. a bit in recent times. But the Highlanders at home, you'd think that, that would help them. But then that game up against the Brumbies, they weren't quite able to seal the victory. The Western Force coming off a win up against the Crusaders Oh, it's, a, it's a hard game to predict, and I agree with you that the Highlanders are one of those sides that after such a promising start, you yeah. know, they were winning games and everyone was like, hang on, hang on, the Highlanders top three, and then they went bottom three pretty quickly yeah. within the next kind of few weeks, but can they get the job done here? I think they should be able to. Like, it's weird, isn't it, that at the start of the season we'd look at their lineup and say, oh, this team's going to be hard to beat. And now we look at that same lineup week in, week out, seeing them losing. So I and now there's like a huge bug in here. Is that a B? It's like, and it, and it, and it, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's to me? Are you fighting an thing. insect, Tim? How is there a B in here? Like, I, I'm honestly surprised there's a, like, is the window open? I feel like this just has to stay in. So I'll just continue talking yeah, while you try yeah, and yeah, deal with the beat. Let's, just, let's actually keep this in. We're, we're going to keep this in, guys. Just you talk, so and I'm just going to inspect you this. Try like, and, you stuff. try and kill the beat. But yeah, I think that the Highlanders, the fact that we look at their same side now at this stage of the season and look at them as maybe a side that can lose more games than they can win, that's one of the more concerning things, I think, for the people down in Dunners. So... You know, I'm still going to back them again. I'm going to be a little bit like you are with the Crusaders, how you've turned your back on them and saying now everyone's going to beat them. I'm at least going to stick with the Highlanders okay. and say they'll get themselves a win, but I would not be surprised. In fact, I can almost predict that you're going to say the Western Force are going to win this game. I want to, but it's – it's. It, it, I think for this one, I just – it's like I'm at that stage with like what I was with the Crusaders last week, where like I'm gonna back them for this. If it doesn't happen again, then I may have to do the opposite. So I will mm -hmm. back them one more time. I think the Highlanders. I just gotta like we'll see what happens here. Then if they don't do it at least this week, then my gosh, I just I don't know how I'm gonna predict them for the future. But um, I will also back the Highlanders just to be clear. But uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough one to call, whoever wins that one, for sure. But um, again, for the final game of the week, we do the likes of the Queensland Reds against the Blues. 
this is a game where um, I'm actually really looking forward to uh, for a lot of reasons. One is that we're actually going to see um, Alex Hodgman go against the likes of his old uh, teammates in the Blues. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward towards that battle because it'll be him versus like Angus Talval in terms of that kind of uh, scrum situation as well. So just kind of just wanted to see. Although kind of to be fair, Ang- Angus Talval, of course, Chiefs boy recently yeah, I as know, well. So it's not still, quite it's, the it's, same. It's still you interesting do, to see what happens. But no. um, but also, you know, he's another player up, up in the conversation for the Wallabies as well. So it's, it's going to be fascinating to see if he can kind of perform, I guess, um, against one of the best sides in the comp. Um, but again, the, the, the Reds are just, um, they were really impressive in that game against the Honduras. Like, they, it was, I think I saw a stat, it was like the first time they've ever, like, they haven't allowed a point against them. Like, I think it was like since 2012 or like 2013. It was something like a long time ago since this has happened. So it's pretty impressive they were able to do that um, in, in the fashion they did. I mean, getting 31 points nil against the Hollanders, like you don't see that often. So, and they, they didn't even have Tate McDermott as well as Fraser McWright. And that's like two of their, one of their, you know, like two of their um, best players really in the side. So it's impressive. I thought like Thomas was pretty good in the number nine spot. Um, I'm trying to think who else was good. Uh, you had um, Hunter Basami, but that kind of um, kicked towards Vinavalu. I thought it was really impressive. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see from what happens in this game. Again, the, the Blues, of course, are just on a run of form at the moment, which is going to be pretty tough to beat them. But um, I guess similar towards what I asked you for the Brumbies, in what way do you think the, the Queens and Reds can beat this Blues side? Well, they have to show up. Of course, that is the first step, <laughs> but... Get off like, the bus, go into the they stadium. Have to, they have to just do a little bit of what they did last week, but I think that they'll have to very much so keep a close eye on that counter-attack from the Blues because that is something we saw in that Brumbies game that did hurt the Brumbies was the fact that every once in a while they'd go for something and then the Blues would get the ball and then they had no defence. So it was just a runaway try time after time. The Reds have to try and be a little bit more structured in that regard, but... You know, as much as I want to say the Reds will win this game, just because I know you're a Blues boy through and through, and I feel like it would slightly hurt your soul just a little bit if I said that the Reds would win and they did. But I'm I'm going to make you feel better. I'm going to say the Blues should win. Oh this game. no, it would make me and feel it, better it, if you chose the Reds because then that's really? an easy that's an easy prediction you, for me. Then mm, <laughs> that's true. Exactly. That, that's that's what I that's what I wanted more actually. But uh, mm. but hey, you're, you're back in the Blues, so so you're back in the Reds then. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Backing the the Reds to crumble, that's for sure. But um, mm-hmm. it's it's one of those where I, I think in this game it, it's going to come down towards I think um, just how well the Blues play because you know they've also even made a few changes in this side. You know, with Kevin Clark coming off the bench for this one, so it's allowing Mark Slater to come in towards that eleven position and Edge and Land to come on to that fourteen. I mean, Rako I think has to have a big game because honestly, I think throughout the season he hasn't really stepped up to the standards of what you expect from him. So I think just he needs to get into a run of games where he kind of just, I don't know, gets a few try assists or at least a try, kind of just show that he's in the game more often. Because again, he sometimes he's kind of like I, I guess lost kind of in a way where we don't kind of see much of him in these yeah. games. So I want him to kind of make a bigger impact in games. Again, Hoskins Tutu can just be his normal self, just do what he's keep just keep doing what he's doing. He's just been brilliant. Uh, Simon Papali. Um, but um, again, I think Funaki as well, another player who's been impressive so far. And I wasn't even going to say it, but like, I, I actually didn't even mention him in my All Blacks video in terms of the squad. But honestly, like throughout the last few weeks, I've been very impressed by him. And he, I mean, maybe this is just from, coming from a Blues perspective. You can tell me if I'm wrong here, but would you put him in kind of like the conversation of like, I'm not saying he'll get into the three, but like you put him in the conversation of like, in terms of the All Blacks scrum maps, like in terms of the conversation of just, because I think he's been pretty good. I mean, for what I've seen so far with Christy out for a long time, but um, maybe I'm a bit delusional. I I don't know. Like, let me know your let me know your take on that. But delusional, eh? Um, delusional. I, oh, there you go. We've coined yeah, that one. That's a new one. Uh, so that's the thing. Nines at the moment are really weird because, of course, there's no Aaron Smith, and yeah. now there's no Cam Royguard. Now TJ Piranata is back being a name that people are mentioning. So, you know, I think that the most likely for Razor this year is to go with TJ and a couple of young guys. I I don't see Finley Christie being in the ABs for the July one. It's good that you're finally seeing the light. Um, so hey, it'll, 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 just look, just watch my video. I I, I didn't I didn't select him. I mm. I, I chose Cortis Latimer, mm-hmm. Flapa Katava, and TJ Piranata. 
those are the three I selected. Um, but I wish kind of um, because I, I didn't mention the likes of what Shaver uh, Shaver Rowe because I thought he did an impressive start with the Chiefs. Same with I mean Finley Christie. I, I had to mention him, but he out of all the scrum halves, he's probably been the least impactful in terms of mm-hmm. any game. So like he's like at the bottom actually. But now that Funaki's actually done very well in, re- in, in the recent weeks, I'd actually even put him over Shaver Rowe actually. So it's one of those like where I think he's mm. definitely in the conversation for, for my for my opinion. But again, um, you've also got to remember like Tolfa Funaki's been looking good, right? But then the Blues have also been playing teams that have hardly even walked onto the field. Yeah, I guess. So yeah. it's great okay. to look brilliant against under nines. But when you end up playing a side that are going to put you under pressure and not allow you to literally play anything you want with no pressure on you whatsoever, like guess, that's yeah. when I want to see him tested. And if he can hold up in that scenario, then I think maybe he'll be a little bit closer. But when you when you put him 50 points on two of your opposition in a row, like, you know, it's hard to judge, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. I mean, like, yeah, when you look at the, I guess, the teams that he's going into the lines of, you know, the Western Force and I guess, um, it just must have forced really just other teams that have kind of gone on for the last few uh few games then yeah i can i, I, I can see your point i just think he's i think he's been good that's, that's all i'm saying but um good. again in terms of this one i will back the blues of course no. uh, there's, there's no doubt about that but Surely um, not i know i know what a surprise there guys what a surprise but um anyway hope you guys obviously enjoyed this episode make sure obviously to like like the video we will greatly appreciate that subscribe to our channel Check out our respective channels and um, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.